Hello. Hi.
Hello everyone. Let's give people a couple more minutes to join here. In the meantime, obviously, as always, please add yourself to the meeting doc as we're waiting. So I just posted the link into the chat in case you need it. Okay, so now we are five minutes in. So I assume that a lot of people are preparing their KubeCon talks as uh, yeah, as we speak, as the recordings will be ready. I'll start give, okay, let us get through the agenda here quickly today and we can obviously finish up earlier. Oh yeah, it's one. Ashish is wearing the KubeCon t-shirt, already getting himself into, into yeah, the mood just... there. I was looking at my shelf and said, oh, this is the one that I should wear today. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay, so for today, we have uh, three points on the agenda here. Uh, number one, uh, that I might move back, just a quick introduction update here on uh, Potato Head. Um, then the operator working group update that Thomas will present and Waypoint. I don't know who added this to the agenda. Okay, Matthew did it, fine. So um, yeah, let me just very quickly start with um, the potato head piece. This is going to be a quick one. So during one of the last meetings, we actually discussed that we start with a small um, app delivery demo. And for my KubeCon talk that we do about the SIG, it was actually a good uh, way to get started on the demo. So the demo doesn't do anything great so far. Um, you can find it here still under my name and app delivery. I'm just pasting this one in here as well. Oops, sorry. Put in here. Why isn't it adding the ordering here? Uh, so what did I do here? Uh, just uh, very briefly, I created a very simple demo application. It's more or less a Go-based web server that is available in three different versions. Uh, and it just says, hello world, and returns uh, the version. So nothing really spe uh, special. The idea was to keep the app really small, and it will obviously evolve as we uh, put more use cases uh, in there. Uh, but that's where it is for the time being. The more interesting things though, so actually you can have a look at it if you go into that one here, 
just have the Docker files for the three versions and you have a like very simplistic Docker server that just not, does nothing else than just return some static content and a hello world with a version number based on a startup parameter it gets. A more interesting thing though, what we wanted to have, we wanted to showcase uh, different projects. If you go into the uh, delivery folder, you will find a number of uh, different approaches in there on how you can actually deploy this application or deliver this application. We have standard Kubernetes manifests. We have uh, using uh, Helm charts. There is also a Helm operator that was built with the operator framework in there. Um, there's also a description uh, on how to use it with, a, with Flux. And there's also a description on how to um, use it with Argo CD. And there's also a version for Argo CD rollout that releases the whole thing and as a canary release. So this is, again, as the, it indicates over here, it's very early stage. It's just that first collection. I just wanted us to have something to get this kick started. Also, if you don't like the name, I'm open for suggestions. I was just thinking of Potato Hat because like you can put stuff together. And the idea is that eventually we have individual services for the individual pieces that you can put on, on the Potato Hat. So there will be a hat service and ear service and you can have different versions. Some might be stateful sets, some might be external components that we're going to pull in there. But yeah, what you're getting, you're getting a simple Go server. You get a multi-stage Docker build file that builds your Docker files. I put them right now in my current um, Docker repository. Eventually, we might think moving it somewhere else, obviously. And then you have these descriptions in here of what you can do with it. And there's like, I would say the direct deployment. There is just a direct deployment with a Helm chart with two variables. Uh, but then there's also a description in there. Okay, that's that's a bad one because that's not fully done yet. I think here's a bit more. Just give me one that I have actually put something in there. I think the Helm-based one has something in there. Yeah, just some basic uh, description. That's actually, yeah, the Helm-based operator. Um, how you can build it, how you can use it, how you can play around with it. So the idea is that we'd like take this basic application as we discussed, it has all of these capabilities and you can more or less then build different scenarios on top. Obviously you can also add chaos engineering in there, uh, a lot of different things. What's not yet done is the CNAP uh, version with Porta. That's still currently work in progress. Um, Thomas and I were working on this one right now. Uh, we kind of got it working, but we did not yet get it working in a platform independent way. So that's still work in progress. Uh, this one just says Flux is not available. It actually is available right now. There's also a Flux version in there as well. And we use this now as a basis also for the, the SIG KubeCon talk. The idea is we had like all of this, ah, the, the landscape is so complicated. What can I do with it? And just walk through it. And this also follows that conversation on the mailing list. Obviously the app is very basic. We have to build more around it. We can build more complex scenarios, but I think it's a good starting point. And I deliberately kept the app small as well because one of the complaints or the limitations I see with some people, they want to run it locally. And if you run like a Canary release with multiple, um, it's a higher replica sets of something like the, uh, the hipster shop, it consumes a lot of resources. So you have to run your own cluster. Running it locally in a smaller mini cube environment is uh, kind of hard here. So that's just the, the initial update um, on this one here. As you've seen, I'm not totally done yet on the documentation bits and pieces. Luckily, all the, right now, only the recording for KubeCon has to work. The final documentation needs to be done once this is out by KubeCon. Again, if you have scenarios, if you want to contribute or to it or do anything about it, just, yeah, feel free to say. Matt, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I have a few things. Uh, when yeah. are you doing the recording for KubeCon? Uh, tomorrow or on Friday. OK. Um, then I noticed the Helm chart here is incredibly basic, like rudimentary basic. Uh, if I throw together a pull request that puts together one that like follows best practices and kind of has the structure we recommend. Okay, I can probably do that later today. So you've got something. Um, then what about a Helm chart repository? Because you just have the chart. 
did you want to show that off or are you intentionally <laughs> so for, for, i think for the time being we kept it like super super simple so i, I more or less threw this together over the weekend because i wanted to have something available okay. um i think if we can have this uh, have this grow i just want to like really show the basics for um Okay. Uh, for the cube concept, we can evolve it and have the repository in there. I also want to eventually go further, like having them uh, the chart signed and everything. So as we progress there, that there should be more. I just wanted to kick it off that we have something to start from, and uh, just starting with hipster shops seemed a bit of an overkill. But yeah, I to totally appreciate any support, and uh, okay. yeah, I was about to move it over to the CNCF. So right now, I just put it under my own uh, organization. So Amy, this is maybe something we can figure out how we can move this in there into a repo that's not uh, my personal one. I would just recommend it. I have a designer over here who gets me a logo because right now the logo is I just took it off Amazon from Martel and just put the Kubernetes logo on top. I think that is not 100% legal what I did here, but I think nobody's going to, um, yeah, to do anything. So that this will be removed as well. Yeah, and I agree the Helm is like the very basic version of it. So whatever you have to add, and obviously you uh, have, a, have a, lot of, a lot of great ideas here, just feel free to change it to whatever you want. Certainly, I'll, I'll start with the basic Helm chart. And then if we've got time, I can help with a repository or something like that too. Even served up using GitHub pages. Um, but I'll start with the basic chart that's that, or a chart that adds a little bit more. Okay. Yeah and, yeah, and obviously going forward, um, I also talked to Harry and uh, some folks over here. We will obviously add a couple of small services. And I just wanted to do something that's not like the standard. This is your e-commerce application where you can buy stuff part. Yeah. And having the idea of being able to configure a potato hat, like with microservices and you serve the ears, you serve the hats, that might be something a bit more fun. And you can eventually even build some, some fun gimmicks around it. Um, Okay. Just as yeah, like a native speaker, I'm not offending anybody by calling it potato hat. No, no, this is, uh, uh, I, I like the name. Um, a lot of people who grew up with those would get a kick out of it. Okay, yeah, but yeah, thanks Matt for your help. And yeah, just feel free to file the PR on it and I'll happily accept. Okay, that, that's it more or less on, on, on that repo and we will obviously continue work on this one. Okay, then I pass over. I think Thomas, you had the operator. Okay. Um, yes, I talked to Alice regarding the regarding the operator working group, and um, we want to make progress on this working group. So um, we decided that it could be a good idea to take this document step by step. And to define what the, what an operator is and not what it not is, um, and also leave out all the discussions of uh, what are competing products or products uh, near nearby. Um, I think this uh, all of these topics are things we could discuss uh, when we have a first draft of the document and when we find out that there that there is something missing. Um, so I sat down together with some people from, from the working group here, and we talked a bit about what an operator could be. Um, so let me share my screen now, if I find it. So, um, yes, and the result, uh, I've That's posted- a bit small maybe for some oh, people. Sorry. Is this better now? Um, okay, so we so um, we talked about it on Monday, and today I've written down the result and tried to sum up everything which was in the definition of an operator until now, and the things we found out on, on Monday. Um, I tr we tried to get a bit of a, defin of a of a rough definition. Afterwards, I tried to describe the word. So, what is an op? What is a controller? What is what are custom resources? Um, what is a custom resource definition? And how does such a custom can such a custom resource look like? And um, yes, afterwards, what is what is a reconciliation re reconcile loop and so on. Afterwards, we found out some some use cases for an operator. So. You need an operator to install, upgrade, 
configure, reconfigure, and so on uh, an application. Um, so I also tried to add this to the document. And I tried to put in some graphics um, about the operations of an operator. So an operator watches and compares external events, current state, and custom resources, um, and gets it to a desired to the desired state, um, and knows how it gets to the desired state. So um, if you want to update from version zero uh, zero dot one to zero dot two, an operator has to know how this works. Um, so. Yes, that's wrapped up. I think I think every one of you can read it. Um, what would be very cool if uh, would be if every one of you could read this. Uh, we could discuss this in the document. Um, but please propose solutions and not only comments. Um, yes, and afterwards we we can also talk about it and change it as needed. So the next yes. Uh, it, one thing that just struck me, can you scroll back up to the beginning real quick? Because what I see is a lot of how an operator works, but not so much what an operator is. And that's what I was. Yeah, so so me as an end user, right? Somebody approaching this whole thing. What is an operator? Like from this, I understand how it works, but I don't really understand fundamentally what is it at its core? Right, it talks about the mechanisms and Kubernetes parlance, but it doesn't base down what I am into a simple definition, and, and and that's what I'm not seeing here. And so that's just one thing. I'll add a comment on it to the doc. Can somebody drop a link to the doc into uh, chat or into the thing? Uh, I'm just digging around for it in the different documents, and I haven't found it. Um, um, there's a link in the in the current speak document uh, at the in the last meeting. From the last meeting? Yes. The last meeting agenda has a mm -hmm. link to an issue, but that was it. Oh, from the last meeting of this one. There is. Uh, okay, I see it. Yep. All right. I see it down there. Thank you. Uh, so please feel free to comment on it, make proposals, and so on. And I think we'll get something, something, uh, something really cool here. Um, but, but a lot of this, so when you think target audience, this is a target audience to somebody who's going to build it and probably needs a foundation in the Kubernetes parts, already knows some of the Kubernetes parts. And so it's somebody in the Kubernetes silo who's navigating Kubernetes who could read this and parse it apart. And even they aren't going to understand well, what's fundamentally difference between this from other types of controllers and CRDs. Can I use CRDs and a controller together and have it not be an operator? Like those kinds of like what is it at its essence that makes it an operator apart from something else isn't here. And if you're not in the Kubernetes silo, this doesn't tell you what it is either. And so I'll make some comments to that, but that's that's kind of what I notice about the definition. Okay. Um, yes, afterwards, I think um, it would be cool if you discuss this and so on. And what I would take as the next step is to, uh, I think, in the, in the document there's something like a maturity model, model. And what I want to do is to find out which things an operator needs to, uh, to get to this maturity level. Um, and eventually uh, get examples of how, um, how such an operator could look like. So just, just one comment here uh, before we discuss to not call it maturity model because not one operator is necessarily more mature than another one because it can do more. That's why I think even the Red Hat documentation switch to stages. Okay. Because it, it doesn't mean that an operator has to be able to do a backup. It's, it's more mature than somebody that does install and updates. Mm -hmm. Just as a minor comment, because people didn't like the idea of having it like maturity. It's like you always want to achieve the highest maturity. Um, uh, also, I only took this from here. Oh, oh, I kept, I kept this model and maturity model. Um, yes, but we'll um, change this to page. Yes, and that's currently all the work we did on the, on the operator working group. So, um, if anyone is interested to, uh, to um, contribute, um, currently I'm sending out a meeting for every week. And um, yes, we're talking about it and trying to get some some discussion into this topic. So please feel free to contact me if you want to contribute.
Yes, that's it from my side. And I see we are planning to have another meeting on this one to, to move this forward, right? Yes. So the next one would be next Tuesdays, Mondays, uh, 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 everything else. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I'd really like to see this document moving moving forward. It has been around for, for quite a while now. I know that, and I appreciate taking taking the lead on this one. Um, and then assume that we have something to, to share soon. And we still have the idea, right, to have like one example, okay, this is how you could do things like in, a, in an abstract way, like not uh, implementation dependent. Like if you want to do an install, that's what something could look like. And also if you want to do a backup um, on a file level, you could also have an example how this looks, how this could look like and how this works. So this would be my plan for the next weeks, I think. Okay, good. Um, yeah, maybe also share it on the mailing list so we don't have that many people joining today, but also give them a chance to, to read it through and ideally also tell them by when uh, you want the, the, the feedback. So I realized that obviously a lot of people, a lot more people are reading the mailing lists and commenting on the mailing list that, uh, than those who are necessarily joining here. That was uh, my takeaway here. Okay, I think the next agenda item is already Waypoint. Matt, what do you want to tell us about Waypoint? Well, I, I so Waypoint, does everybody know what Waypoint is here? No, okay. So Waypoint, uh, and I dropped a link in, is a new project by HashiCorp. Uh, that's a PaaS, but they're not calling it a PaaS, but in their session, they called it a PaaS. And it's a new thing that runs on Kubernetes. If I understand it right, it's from HashiCorp, but a number of the people are old Herokuers. And it's one of those things that is definitely an app delivery thing. Now, I'm sure HashiCorp, because they never give anything up to the CNCF, isn't looking to donate it to the CNCF. But the project, the philosophy, and what they're building here very much has to do with app delivery. And so it, it just came out. Was it earlier this week or last week? I've already lost track of the days. And I thought it would be something worth just exploring and looking at here. Now, I can't walk through it yet because I haven't stood it up and, and uh, taken it through uh, its courses yet. That's what I plan on doing the rest of this or part of this week. Um, but it is one of those things that I think is worth us looking at and who the audience is and understanding. Um, it would be a great exploratory point. And it's a new project, too. So yeah. I mean, I can try and, and pick it apart and try and do a demo next week, unless there's somebody or next time, unless there's somebody who's better at it. But I think it's something we should look at, explore and understand. Yeah, we could also ask somebody from HashiCorp whether they wanted to probably yeah. demo it. Not that I don't believe that you could do it, but I think- No, they would do a much better job. I think they can, they can push this in the way it is. And yeah, we, we do want to invite projects. I think it's a, it's a good idea to have projects present and we try to do it more and more, even if they don't want to necessarily become a CCF project. I think that's totally fine. Yeah. And, and the person who did the most is Mitchell, the CTO of HashiCorp. I don't know if he's gonna uh, be up for coming, but he might be. Um, other than that, everybody else had far, wow. Wow, did he write a lot of that. Um, so uh, I don't know, does anybody know anybody who's worked on this to, to do this? I can poke Mitchell, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I can poke him and see if he wants to come. Um, other than that, I'm not sure who else would be good to invite and I don't know the rest. Well, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, you can poke him or otherwise I can reach out to some people on the on who I know and I think there's a lot of people at the HashiCorp side, side as well. Um, they, they will definitely have somebody who's willing to demo. I'm, I'm pretty pretty sure about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I just thought of somebody else I can hit up. Okay. Um, I, I can try to track down a couple of people and see if I can find anybody who'd be wanting, willing to come and demo for us. But I, I really think exploring the users and how it works with Kubernetes and what it means um, would be enlightening and fun. That's all I wanted to bring up. Yeah, good point. So let's, let's reach out to them and try to get them on to the next meeting. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not very careful to not schedule something for any meeting that's going to be in the KubeCon week right now. 
Do we have a meeting the week of KubeCon? Um, I don't think so. But I also don't know. Let me check. So the next one is definitely before KubeCon. Yeah. Next one, because it's in two weeks from now, it's, yeah, the next one will be November 4th. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting date, by the way. It is? <laughs> uh, What's November 4th? Isn't the US, isn't that the day after the, the election? Oh, that's two days yeah, after. Matt, oh, yes, yes, it American. Is. You're right. You're right. November fourth, the day after the election. You're right. So, you you are right, and that you do have a meeting on uh, November eighteenth. Um, and we can certainly keep that if you all have like an actual scheduled presentation. We try to be able to cancel all the SIG meetings during the time of the KubeCon uh, virtual stuff going on. Um, but honestly, I would probably cancel it. I think people will be full with KubeCon related work and mm -hmm. uh, I think no, because looking at the agenda right now, things we're working on is like I started to work on a demo application. We have the, the operator documents. We're looking into project presentations. The, the landscape that uh, Harry was kicking off would be another action. I think nobody during KubeCon week is like really that receptive for these topics. So I'd, I'd rather cancel that one and then move it to and then let's then, then skip over for one week and then have it the next meeting. I think that makes more sense. Yeah, that then means that your next meeting is going to be December 2nd. So you'll have one on November 4th and then December 2nd. That gets us pretty close to holiday season already. Exactly. Dates and calendars, you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. The year is frozen. Oh, I was just going to say, I just updated the agenda so that the 18th is listed as being canceled, just Perfect. so it's on there and recorded. So if somebody does jump into this looking, somebody should cancel the calendar invite too. Yes, I think. Uh, I will take care of it, all good. Okay, sounds good. I think we don't have anything else on the agenda unless anybody wants to bring up something that we can give people 15 minutes back of their time. Which I have you? one question, this is sure. Ashish. So I know that you know early when we started the um, this group, we talked about application definition. What is an application means in in Kubernetes standpoint? And I actually missed quite a few meetings in between. And I'm just wondering, did we settle on one definition, or is it something that is not our responsibility? Uh, I think we can't really set on it. Uh, we put it in there. We had some project. Harry, did we have? OEM present, I think that's the closest maybe to like really application definition. We could also argue we have an application definition in, in Helm as well. And, but we never really keep like any specific work off. I think we had some projects obviously present on a number of topics. Yeah, on, on the Kubernetes side, we've, it's hard to say what's an application and what's a workload and what's an application made up of other applications it's really hard to define. Kubernetes SIG apps has long kind of stayed away from defining what an application is because it's, it's difficult to define in some kind of way that's easy to validate, right? Um, and so we've kind of stuck with workloads and, and generic terms. Uh, there is the application CRD and controller, which doesn't so much define it, but gives you lots of flexibility in what you want it to be. Um, it still doesn't define it, but maybe goes a step further. Uh, but I don't know that that's, that's a very, very, very hard thing and will probably be debated by people. Um, and so that, uh, keeping it as a loose term is probably the easiest way to go. Yeah, so the, the, the way I see right now, the way I usually want to tell people, so at the end of the day, you have to create something for a Kubernetes-based application that Kubernetes understands, which means you have to create, obviously, that the workloads, which don't contain everything, especially when it comes more to like a domain logic type of approach. There are some projects who are trying to do something in that space. And that's also, I think, one of the reasons why I wanted to kick off this work on like the demo application, because then we can think, okay, how can we define it? Like, what do we all have to ship with the thing? Like, what, what, do, you come, uh, or, uh, what do you all need to have in that application? How do you define the dependencies in there? 
like, like one example for me is how do I define that one service has a dependency, a runtime like dependency on another one, like service A wants to call service B. Um, is is that problem we, we, we want to solve at the app space or is it more at the, at the tracing uh, or observability problem? Uh, for me, it's, yeah. I mean, I mean, the tracing problem is obviously solved by, 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 by uh, the open telemetry, but they do it after the fact. Okay. So, yeah, and, and some of this is going to get up with how you even deploy your application, right? So you've got a, a dependency on Postgres, right? Uh, are you using Postgres as a service? Are you running your own Postgres? How are you doing it? And then, you know, are you using GitOps? Are you using that combined with Helm charts? Are you using static files? Are you using some other system on top of that? Um, I know there's even still people who use Terraform with some of this stuff. And we'll go ahead and uh, tell their... You know, AWS or somebody, hey, I need Postgres, and then inject that into something else. There's a bunch of different ways people do this. And do we want to give just one example of doing it? How far into it do we want to go, right? And, and what is that example you want to use as a data store or something else that you'd want to do as a dependency? Like, how, how are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about a common one you can get as a SaaS or something that ships in this package? What are you thinking? All right. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think just having like a demo app and like you know, at least like it's I don't know a Postgres dependency. I think it doesn't so much depend as it like it lives inside of uh, of the cluster, or outside of the cluster. But that, that's also what I eventually want to do, like adding more and more use cases. And I think we won't be able to say like this is the way how you define your application. I think the best we can do is like these are five ways what you could have done, from like writing all of your manifests and maybe having a Python script running across your manifests which might not be that smart, like having a Helm chart, using, uh, or you say, well, you want to have that rollout flexibility in there by using Argo rollouts. That's kind of what I tried to start with this example. I think it's more by example to the point that we're not here to tell people how to write their application, which is doing in different ways, what they could do and which tools they could use, and they should pick and choose what fits their needs best. And maybe along the lines, we find a way that's more convenient than another one for most people. Sure, and and I think, but an outside one like a, a SaaS, like a database, is an easy one. So if I'm thinking Helm, you might set a dependency on a Postgres chart, and that's only if it's enabled. Otherwise, you pass in your credential for your hosted one, the URL, using password database, that information, and your app then uses that instead of one. And so you've got two choices depending on what you pass into your Helm chart. In one case, it pulls down and it uses a dependency, in the other case it uses a SaaS and that's up to you at a runtime configuration. Um, and that's just documented and explained. And then you've got two choices in, in how you distribute it. And that's all the way I wanted to bring it in and just show people, this is how you would do it with Helm. This is like another way you could, could, could do it. But I think that's also why I wanted to get the example to be a bit more complex than it is right now, obviously, but we had to start somewhere, but and then just show what, what works best for people and show them how they can like learn by example. And that's also why I wanted to, to I structure the example differently because if you look at um, this, the standard hipster shop example, it focuses more on how you can like use different programming languages and bring them all together. Like it focuses more on the microservice side of the house. And obviously there, there, is, there, there is Kubernetes manifests, there are Helm charts for all of it, but it's okay, this is, this is a way how you can like get it out there and deploy, but it doesn't show like five or six or different ways or how you can use different projects for it. It was not so much in the in the focus there. And this is also the difference what I see with Potato Hat versus like a hipster shop. I don't care so much what the application does and that it can write in five different languages and build it. Here's just a number of images and this is how I can structure it together and build something that's kind of interesting and solves, um, solves typical problems out there. So that's... Um, but yeah, I, I think that might take us like one step closer by giving people opportunities to do things in different ways and having good descriptions. Yeah, yeah. We should just try to make sure that each way is documented and done well so that somebody who comes in to look at it can walk away understanding, 
not just seeing an example, but understanding how it works and how it goes together and why things are done a certain way so they can make wise decisions on their own stuff walking forward. Yeah, that's also why uh, I think there's for app delivery people also want to reach out to like other projects where they want to then provide something. But currently we have no service mesh configurations in there. That might make, would make the thing also more complex um, or say add additional things on top of it. Um, or, or we have no like policies in there or anything. So people might throw in more and more as, as we go. And I just I agree that you should actually start from scratch, understand what you're actually doing there. Um, I just wanted to kick it off and have something there. And fortunately I picked the examples that I have not yet written. So. Um, I think that that's the best we can show people how they can use different projects and experiment with them. And ideally have, have for them something that they can get there and say, okay, I'm trying it. And ideally, I mean, it's almost like you, you, you're trying to get like the perfect polo or sweatshirt. You're trying three or four different ways and then you see which one fits you best for the application that you're running. Yeah, yeah, I really like the way how this is done here. I really like the way how this is done here. And uh, I think having an easy way, like testing out like six or seven projects for app delivery, I find kind of convenient because you just learn a lot and you start to understand the concepts and, and how they fit together. I think it's not the perfect answer, but I think as we ideally will see more people contributing, it, it, it can grow. I think it depends on all of us. Uh, to, to, to make this work. But I think it would be hard to just say, this is how you define an application. We might end up with uh, a lot of different opinions. I, I mean, that's probably the reason I asked that because um, you know I've, I've did some experimentation on the space and based on some questions that I got from people and I saw that there's no concrete answer, so. And it's, it's also kind of hard because it would always mean you have to learn in something new again on top. Well, if you concentrate on what's useful, coming up with a definition of an application doesn't mean it's necessarily useful for somebody who's got to run something in it. How do I take the technologies in front of me and understand them and pick the right ones and choose it in order to run it? That's a useful thing. Getting into the semantics of what is an application versus what isn't versus an application of applications isn't necessarily useful to a, a customer or end user or anything in how they're going to go about doing something. It ends up being a semantic conversation. And so that's why I would concentrate more on how do you use these technologies in different situations well, because somebody can walk away with that and, and do something with it. Yeah, and you, you were thinking like, having like fun examples that I didn't have time to implement, but I can say, well, I'm using GitOps, but I also want to use an operator. You can actually use GitOps and an operator together and like building in an example where I'm using GitOps to update the COD of the operator. There's obviously hundreds of different ways to do certain things. And as, as we progress, we can build like really fun examples that and allow people to experiment. Um, but I, I agree, like defining the semantics doesn't help anybody. Like, okay, like this is a, what I'm saying, this is a, this is an application, which right now is overly simplistic, obviously, that has like all the characteristics we see in our, in a, in a typical application by like having like secrets, by having multiple services and multiple versions, so party dependencies, blah, blah, blah. And this, this is how you can like ship it, how you can like define all of these dependencies and how you can handle it. And I like five different way, ways and pick whatever you like best. And if you come up with another opinion, feel free to, or another option, feel free to share it. I think that's, that would already be a, like a kind of pro, a progress because right now everything, most, let's put it that way, most projects focus on building an application to showcase the capabilities, which, which makes a lot of sense. But we are more or less creating the problem up front and then see how those projects solve the specific problem. So usually if you show like how, what you can do in your project and that's how you build your demo application. Now we're kind of like creating an application. It's like, these are like the seven problem, problems that people usually have in shipping it. This is how you solve it in different technologies and where do they help you and where can they help you? I think that's, we've been saying like, rather than defining like what is an application, like can we agree that this, this, this thing that we're deploying here has all the characteristics we usually see in an application or, or most of it. And then 
um, show people how they can deliver it, how they can update it, how they can manage it. I think that might be the more helpful thing here. Okay. Um, one another question um, is um, you 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 use the word microservices when you said when we are explaining how people to use um, you know application delivery using microservices. Does it mean that we are we are taking the serverless or that particular stream out of the scope altogether, or it's just that we're starting with microservices and eventually we will we will have any workload that we can put in Kubernetes? I just wanted to start somewhere. And okay. having something that runs in the container that I just now call a microservice, I think is the easiest thing to do. Obviously we can move it further to serverless and I think eventually we should. And but usually when you deploy serverless workflow, you have to deploy all the underlying serverless uh, infrastructure as well to run your serverless workflows. But that's correct. I think that's, that's probably another you know, major undertaking that we'll have to use if there are tools or any other capabilities that we can use for that as well. But it's a, it's a lot dependent on the platform, the whatever the serverless platform of choice that, that we'll be using for that specific deployment. Yeah, but I'm not excluding it. It was just well, well, like, as you can see, I just started with seven lines of code. Okay. That's, that was the whole idea here. That's why it's a microservice because it's really micro. All right, I think we are pretty much done for today. Any last words before we end the meeting? All right, then. See everybody again in two weeks from now. Bye.